In this tutorial you will learn how to create different types of spiral surfaces in Grasshopper and we'll cover multiple approaches how you can generate them that can be used as a base geometry for spiral circuses, ramps, landscape design and many other things. Let's get started. Quick announcement guys, if you're interested in a structured step-by-step -step learning approach with personal one-on-one -on -one support 24-7 and homework exercises, feel free to send an application for our Rhino for Architects online course and schedule your call with us where you will get more information about that. First link in the description. The course covers various topics like parametric modeling with Grasshopper, fluid form modeling with SAPD, architectural visualization, animation, presentation techniques and way more things. As we currently have a couple of available spots, I invite you to apply today and grab this golden nugget before it's gone. Before we start with the creating spiral curves and spiral surfaces, I will explain you essential component in the process of making them. The component is called point polar and it creates points or points based on the origin point that is plugged in the input P. So if we set first point, right click and set one point and this guy will connect with the P input, then this point represents the origin. XY input represents the angle in radians and D represents the offset distance from the point. I will skip this for now. So once we have point, we have the offset distance, which is in this case 5.56 and the angle is zero. I created slider from zero to 360. So we can use uh, this in degrees and I will use radians component to convert uh, these values in the radians and I will plug it here. So we have this point, we have the offset and we have the angle which is zero. So it means that the origin point will be moved along uh, zero degrees 5.56. So this is 5.56 and this is the result. This point is the result. I created a circle just to make it more clear. If I change this slide, you can see how the position of the point is modified based on this angle. But the distance stays the same. If I change the distance, then the point is modified as well. All right. And the Z input represents another angle in radians. It means if you want to rotate this in Z direction. Let me explain. Here we set the angle and we have this angle here. Here we set the distance and it's this one. Because right now this one is zero, if we change this slider, then this point will be moved along the plane uh, based on this direction and Z direction. So this, these two direction represent the plane of rotation of this point. So, if we change this slider, the point will be rotated based on the plane I sketch here. So if we change, let's say from zero to 30, this point will be moved for, let's say 30 degrees along this direction. Still, the distance from the origin point uh, stays 4.64, this angle stays the same and this angle it's not zero anymore it's 30. Let me change here. You can see if I change this slider we can see how uh, this point is rotated along this direction. So once again with this slider we set angle in xy direction. With this slider we set the distance from the origin point and with this slider we can rotate a point based on the angle we set here and Z direction. As I said this is this component is essential to understand and it will be used in all example in this tutorial. Now I'm going to explain you how to create spiral and calyx surface. I will turn off this. All right here we have origin point but in this case, instead of placing one input, we'll create multiple values for the XY input or the angle in XY plane. The angles we can generate from the range component within domain 8 pi to 0. And we'll uh, extract 145 values. So 
you can see here that we have 145 values within domain 0 to 8 pi. This guys will place in the x y input and the distance from the origin point will be 10. Let's see what we get. We have multiple points or we have 155 points on x y plane but we can see just 30 or 40 of them. This is because they are overlapped uh, to each other and if we move them along z direction for the amplitude of the z vector also we will generate multiple different values that will be generated from the range component uh, the same number of uh, amplitude we will have as we have points but the distance will be from uh, 0 to 220 so if I connect the panel you can see that we generated uh, 145 values from uh, 0 to 20. It means that first point will be stay in the same position, next one will be moved uh, along Z direction for 0 0.138889 and the last point will be moved along Z direction for 20. Alright, if I turn this on, we can see that we generated multiple points. Here we can change the angle, here we can change the number of points and here we can change the radius of this spiral and here we can change the height. Alright, we'll create another spiral, the only difference will be uh, offset distance from the origin point. So one set of points has um, distance uh, 10 and another set of points has a um, distance 6 and all of them will be moved along uh, z direction for the same values as we use here and i will turn this on turn this off and you can see we have uh, two set of points if we use component line we can connect them and with the loft we can create helicoid surface in the next example, I will teach you how we can create conical spiral and based on that, we'll create conical spiral ramp. So, I will turn off this and again, we'll start with a point. The only difference from the previous example is that here, we'll have multiple values in the offset distance input. So, basically, we'll connect point with the P in the XY input, we'll generate uh, numbers from 0 to 7 pi and 199 steps it means we will have 200 values and you can see in the panel from 0 to 7 pi we generated 200 equally distributed numbers and these numbers we will place in the xy input for the offset distance again we will create domain but in this case let's say from 0 to 12 equally distributed uh, 200 numbers as well as we have here. So it's really important to have the same number of values as we have points. These values will place in the D and once I turn this on, we can see how we generated points distributed in a spiral shape on XY plane. And once we have these points, we'll move them along Z direction. And the amplitude will be uh, multiple different values. Again, we'll use range component. In this case, we'll generate equally distributed numbers between 0 to 18. Same number of uh, divisions as we have points. It means we'll have 200 values and these numbers will place in the unit Z component. Once I turn this on and connect with the interpolate component, we created conical spiral. The next step is to create a ramp based on this spiral. In order to create that, we need to extract horizontal plane on the curve based on these points. So, basically we need to take out curve parameter for the each point. That's why we will project 200 points we have here on the curve using curve closest point and in the output we have T. This is curve parameter at each point. And once we connect T with the horizontal frame component, in the C goes the curve, we can create horizontal frames. 
Now the next step is to take out y direction of each plane and using this direction uh, we can create SD align. So that's why we're going to use deconstruct plane in order to extract y direction of each plane and this direction will connect with the D input of the SD align. Start point will be origin of the plane and here we set the length line or the width of the ramp. Once we have frames, deconstruct, origin goes in the start, direction will be opposite direction of the Y component, that's why we use reverse and here we set the length of the line. Once I turn this on, we can see how we generated lines and based on these lines with the loft component we can create conical spiral ramp. Alright, in the next example I will show you how we can combine uh, polar point and graph mapper. Uh, I will turn off this for now. Here we create a region point, here we create angle in radians from 0 to 8 pi, 167 uh, values uh, and in the D for the uh, offset distance from the region point we will have different values from 0 to 4 pi. I check here reverse so if you want to change the direction of the spiral you can either uh, check or uncheck this one. Once we have points in XY plane we can move them along a Z direction but these values we can generate from the graph mapper. First we will create the domain from 0 to 1 with the same values as we have points and then these values we will remap using graph mapper and these values uh, from the graph mapper from 0 to 1 we will remap to domain uh, from 0 0.92 to 15.62 I set these two values arbitrarily we can play with these two sliders and uh, modify uh, the result. Once we generate these values, we will create the SDL line. This will be the origin point. Lines will be generated along that direction. And here we have the its length. And once we have lines, we can create the surface. Uh, by changing this value, you can twist uh, it even more. With this one you can change the radius and here we can uh, modify the height of these lines. Alright, in the next example we will uh, include uh, input Z in order to create conical spiral surface. Here is the origin point. The angles we can generate from the range component from 0 to 5pi, 165 values. Here we set offset distance from the origin point. And here we'll set for how much we want to rotate these points. First I will set to 0 and I will turn on this. Basically the result is very similar to the previous result. But if we add a value in the input set will get something different. I create the slider from 0 to 360 and in order to convert degrees into radians I add component radians and you can see what we'll get. Basically all these points will be rotated by 30 degrees. Something like this. So instead of moving them along Z direction as we did in one of the previous examples we will rotate them with the input Z and we'll create another one but with a different offset distance from the origin point. So the same origin point, same angles uh, in XY, same Z angle for the rotation but different offset distance. And we get something like this. You can see that they all uh, rotated for the 30 degrees as these guys and once we have these two set of points uh, we can create the lines between them. Once we have the lines we can create the surface. Something like this. Alright and here we can change 
the angle of the conical spiral surface and here we can create even more rotation. If you are interested in watching the extended version of this tutorial where we will cover how we can combine golden ratio component with the process of creating spiral surfaces and where we will teach you how to create spiral ramp used in the project Spiraling Observation Tower designed by Effect Architects, you can watch it on our Patreon page and support our work at the same time. With that, you will also get access to all our extended tutorials and project files. If you want to see a tutorial on how to create spiral staircases in Grasshopper, please let us know in the comments and we will make a tutorial for you. Last but not least, I would like to send special thanks to all our Patreon supporters. If you like what we do, please consider becoming a patron yourself. And if you made this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Hit the like button if you like this video. Consider subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you don't miss any future tutorials. Take care, stay safe and see you soon.